Hello and welcome to the 49ers First and 10 podcast, 10 minutes of the most up-to-date 49ers news first thing in the morning. I'm your host, Brianna McDonald, and I'm joined by 49ers team reporter, Lindsay Pilares, and a special guest, David Lombardi from The Athletic. David, thanks for joining us. How has the offseason been treating you? What's going on? It's been it's been treating me well. I'm training for a big swim right now, and uh, it's given me a chance to I think take a little bit of a breath, but never too big of a breath because as we know, the draft is coming up. And as we know, this never stops. Maybe sometime in July, like late June, early July, we'll have a break, but no real, real break until then. Absolutely. Well, today we are going to get into all the 49ers latest offseason updates and talk some more about the draft that you said is quickly approaching. But OTAs begin today for the 49ers. Lindsay, could you share what exactly OTAs are and what the players will be up to today? Yeah, the 49ers offseason workout program begins today. Um, It sounds exactly like what it is. Um, This is when players can return to the building. Um, This is what we call phase one. So no coaches are involved. Think very limited meetings, rehab, um, no no sort of contact or like football active. It's like really the ramp up to OTAs, which come later in May and then mandatory mini camp, which we will see in early June. Um, it's optional. So you're not going to have the full team back in the building. So whoever is around Santa Clara wants to come in, wants to get that work started. A lot of players train elsewhere. They have their own gyms, various amounts of things. So this is just the very slow ramp up, but kind of like David said, there is no true off season until after you break from that mandatory mini camp and then that break right before the start of training camp. So yeah, the ramp up has begun. Nice. Well, it's not exactly OTAs, but yesterday there was some action at Levi Stadium with Brock's football camp. Lindsay, you were on hand for all the action. How was your Sunday at Levi Stadium? I just want to say the first thing when I drove in, it looked like a concert was about to go off (laughs) at Levi Stadium because there was a huge turnout, a huge line of kids, parents, Brock Purdy fans. Um, And I mean, I don't have the exact count, but it I feel like it had to have been at least like 500 kids like that field at Levi Stadium was full. Full. Um, and I got to talk to Brock Purdy uh, for a few minutes yesterday, um, you know, feeling healthy, really big smiles all around, loves being with the kids. Um, he said that this is actually his first football camp. He's going to have another one in Iowa, I believe, in June. So this was, I think, a really good test run, huge turnout. Um, there was a meet and greet with Brock Purdy. Um, all the kids were so excited. Parents were excited. Everyone was having a good time. Um, and then he actually jumped in for all the on the field work with the kids. He was either holding a mat or teaching them how to refine their throws. Um, so it was a really good time. Um, he says this is a completely different feeling from last off season when he was rehabbing from a major elbow surgery. He actually, you know, like we heard Kyle Shanahan say, get to focus on elevating his game and just taking that next step from the second to the third year. Totally different from what we were talking about 365 days ago. David, what do you think about Brock having this fully healthy offseason and having some fun at Levi Stadium? Well, that's something that Kyle Shanahan was really excited about the last time that I saw him, which was at the owners' meetings in March at the end of the month. Remember that in 2022, this point of the year, Brock wasn't part of the 49ers yet. The draft was still coming up. It was still about 10 days away. And then, as Lindsay said, in 2023, he was rehabbing from the elbow surgery. So this is the first true offseason program in the NFL for Brock Purdy. And and I think that in an offense like the 49ers, which is so rhythm-based, so timing-based, and obviously Kyle Shanahan wants the quarterback to be an extension of himself out on the field. He wants that quarterback to be able to manage everything to perfection. And I think that Brock Purdy has done such a good job at that. But imagine that he's done such a good job even without a true offseason in the NFL. So now he finally gets one. I think the things the 49ers still want to iron out they can iron out this offseason. And we just need to remind ourselves how good Brock Purdy has been, especially last year. It, you know, if you didn't know that he had had elbow surgery, uh, you would have never found out because he led the NFL in essentially every single statistic, some of them by massive, massive margins. The efficiency stats were awesome. And, you know, it makes you wonder how much better can he be. But I, I do think 
that Brock Purdy and the 49ers both look at the tape from last year and they both see opportunities to get even better, which is really scary for the rest of the league. So today's big because it's the beginning of part of the journey that we haven't had a chance to see yet with Brock Purdy, and that is actually getting real offseason work in with the 49ers. And now a quick roster update. The 49ers have signed a cornerback to the squad. Lindsay, could you tell us more about this move? Yeah, the 49ers signed last week cornerback Rock Yun Sin. Um, he was drafted in 2019, originally by the Indiana- Indianapolis Colts. He's now spent some time with three different organizations, most recently with the Baltimore Ravens. To me, this looks like just continuing to bolster that 49ers secondary. Um, obviously, the 49ers have made several additions during this free agency period um, to the back end of their defense, so definitely shoring that up heading in into training camp. David, what are your thoughts on this roster move from the 49ers? I think that their cornerback room is in a lot better spot now than it was at this point last year, which is obviously the goal on a year in year out basis. You want to get better. Last season, they they struggled a little bit to figure out that nickelback rotation. Obviously, Isaiah Oliver started the season in that spot. Uh, didn't finish the season as the starter in that spot. Diameter Lenore seems to have become their preferred option at nickel, which is a, just a Different skill set is required than outside, but they believe he's versatile enough to play on the outside and base packages and move inside to that slot corner spot where you need a little bit more physicality on the nickel downs. But when they do that, they need somebody to take Lenore's spot on the outside. We saw Ambry Thomas primarily in that role last year, but this offseason they've signed Isaac Yidham, who had an awesome back half of the season last year with the Saints. I think he's probably the front runner for that. And then Rocky has seen who they just signed, I think is competition with, with Isaac Gidham at that spot. So they have multiple options now. And don't forget the guys already on the team, like Thomas, like Samuel Womack, and like Darrell Luter Jr., who I think the 49ers really like as well. So there are many, many options now. And, and I think the depth of options is much greater than it was at this point last season. Great. Yeah. Well, now let's talk more about the upcoming draft. David, who are some prospects that caught your eye? What is your latest mock draft looking like? Well, I like Roger Rosengarten. There was pictures uh, online of, of John Lynch and Chris Furster, the 49ers offensive line coach at Washington's spring practice the other day. And I think that they worked out Roger Rosengarten, who is the fastest offensive lineman in all of uh, this draft class. And we know that the 49ers love fast offensive linemen. Joe Staley was one of the fastest offensive linemen ever. He played for the 49ers and for Kyle Shanahan. I think that fits really well into the outside zone blocking scheme. And it just so happens that Joe Staley is training Roger Rosengarten, who's who's coming, as I said, coming out of Washington. He also went to high school at Valor Christian in Denver, which is where Christian McCaffrey went to high school. And he, Ed McCaffrey, former 49er, former Bronco, Christian's dad, coached Roger Rosengarten for a couple of years. So anyway, when I connect a lot of the tea leaves, that that's somebody who I'm going to be talking a lot about over the next couple of weeks before the draft. I think that he is a nice fit for the 49ers. I do think they're going to use this draft to try to bolster the offensive line just because those players in free agency were going for wild amounts of money. I don't think it was necessarily cost-efficient play for the 49ers to look for O-linemen in free agency. Instead, we saw them rehaul their defense. So here in this draft, I do expect them to take some swings on offensive line. Wouldn't be surprised to see them look at a cornerback as well in this draft, but they've got 10 picks right now. So the main thing here is not a specific name to me. It's about a general infusion of quality youth into the roster because that's how you can build a sustainable team. And they've done such a good job. John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan have at this over the years they're paying a lot of stars, probably more than any other team, right? The 49ers have a big budget of stars, but you can't pay 53 guys. So a a lot of those spots have to be filled by this younger talent, and you have to constantly make sure that you do infuse that roster with the youth that I'm talking about. And I think that this draft picks one through 10 is going to be really important in that regard. Absolutely. Well, Lindsay, with all the prospects that are potential picks for the team, what qualities make a player a perfect fit for the 49ers in this draft? You know, I feel like we hear it every draft cycle, but the 49ers are big on physical players. Also, they really do value that 
high character player, as much as everything that you see on the field that is necessary to create a winning team. And obviously they pay attention to skill sets and what the current needs are. But yeah, you always hear about this 49er way. There is a standard of excellence that has been set here that goes right along with you want a high caliber player on the field. I'm sure that we'll get a little bit of a refresher on that this year, but something to also look at. Um, and, you know, John Lynch is out there looking at prospects like this is something that gets kept in mind every single year. All right. Well, that will do it for today. Thank you so much, Lindsay and David, for joining me in this episode. Faithful, don't forget to follow First and Ten on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Be sure to turn on the notifications and thank you for tuning in. Bye.